first photo by Robert E. Keyes, PhD. Born in the imaginations of science fiction writers, nurtured in the minds of geniuses, built by the hands of engineers, the interspace drive was the pinnacle of human achievement so far. Warp 1 was the first ship to mount this surprisingly small device that cast a web of energy around it that distant black holes could bend to create a faster-than-light propellant to anywhere into the infinity of the universe. As navigator of the Virgin crew of Warp 1 poised in Earth orbit, I wondered if anything had happened when the interspace drive indicated arrival. We felt nothing, until chills ran up our spines when we noticed the rings of Saturn right outside the viewports. Son of a bitch! The technology worked! Get out the star map. Next destination, the Crab Nebula, about 6,500 light years away. Calculated time of arrival? Interspace command interface shows nine minutes. Holy fuck! We are gonna have some fun now. A faint blur passed the viewport and we saw only the blackness of empty space. Did we miss it? Wait. Ah, uh, but of course, 6,500 light years was a best guess from Earth's puny position. Actual distance, 7,143 light years to the nebula. Nailed it. The crew was now out of their minds with adventure. The Andromeda galaxy, Andromeda. Two million light years away. Do the math, do the math. About 40 hours using interspace. Check the water, check the food. Yep, good to go. Press the button. Interspace was humming away when I fell asleep. Suddenly, shouts, crying and laughter startled me awake. The whole crew was pressed against the view panel. And there it was, the first time any human had ever seen our own Milky Way galaxy. So incredibly beautiful. A delicate barred spiral with the Orion arm clearly visible and our home planet's sun but a tiny twinkle in the dazzling array. We were halfway to Andromeda, which filled the opposite side viewport as an overpowering mass of stars, red, white, and blue blazing over the ultra-blackness of space. Space, no longer as big as it used to be. Deep within Andromeda, a very clear signal pointed us to a star almost identical to our own soul. Planets! An alien solar system with life! We are not alone! I commanded the surface mission, I was the alien now. Under a blue sky much like what I had seen in New Mexico, the surface of the plain over which our craft hovered looked like a freshly cut pasture of hay. Small tufts of brownish straw rumpled the soil in all directions. To my right, a road. A black ribbon cut straight off into the distance, just like a road in Monument Valley. It was the work of sentient beings without a doubt. Cautiously, we followed the road, wondering what strange thing would detect us, or what, 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 too many questions. Then edifices, geometrically perfect, human in dimensions, no wires, but antenna, and no, them. Utter stillness. Were they hiding from us? Invisible? Microscopic? Long dead? I snapped a few pictures and then we started a grid search around the small but incredibly well-organized development. A glint of a flashing red light caught my eye. Our magnifying ocular showed movement. Human curiosity and the certainty of first contact demanded investigation. We approached a crossroads intersection where the event was as clear as a bell. An authority figure, very human-like, but with brown, scaly skin and no hair was sitting inside a hovering black vehicle shaped like a horizontal teardrop. An alien cop? It saw us. How else can I describe this alien but as an it that saw us, except by the fact that the black vehicle was now flying toward us very quickly. I snapped another photo that captured the face of this otherworldly creature, and then we sped off the planet. Back on board the mothership, the crew debated which photo would be chosen for the cover of Scientific American magazine. The first picture of the Milky Way galaxy, or my picture of the first alien being. My money was on the alien. 